Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Recently I did a video in which I showed how I tape and glue smaller size jigsaw puzzles. And I said in that video I would do a follow up on how I address larger jigsaw puzzles. In the past, I glued my beautiful 5,000 piece Ravensburger antique world map and I had it professionally framed. It's still down at the jigsaw puzzle display. I absolutely love it. And I thought for the follow-up video, I would just do that same process with the Clementoni 6,000 piece downtown jigsaw puzzle. But then I thought about how I encountered the issue with the 54,000 piece Graphica travel around art jigsaw puzzle, which is also down at the display. When I came to put it up on the wall, there was like offsets and distortions between the sections. You see, I built that jigsaw puzzle 27 sections of 2,000 pieces each. I did one section, flipped it over, taped the back. I didn't consider how the sections connected to one another when I was taping them. So basically, I removed the flexibility and the give in the jigsaw puzzle pieces and I forced them into place. But by doing so, in each individual section, when I came to try to put them up on the wall at the display, I could get two or three sections in a row and it looked pretty good, but then the offset started and the distortion and things didn't quite fit. In the end, I had to put it up on the wall and leave a gap between all the sections. I still think it looks really, really nice, but I thought to myself, is there a better way at taping large size jigsaw puzzles into multiple sections but avoiding that issue where you potentially won't be able to nicely connect between the sections. So I think I found a solution. As you can see, I have the downtown up on the wall, beautifully connected, and this is taped in four sections. So let's watch the time lapse and I'll talk to you during the voiceover and explain exactly what I did. So the first thing I did on the back of the jigsaw puzzle is I marked out the sections that I wanted to tape. I just aligned it with the repeat cut pattern, but I could actually have divided this further. Like I could have subdivided each one of those four sections smaller to maybe make them easier. And then what I did is I'm taping each section individually. The line tells me where to stop and I don't want the duct tape to overlap the prongs from the next section. So of course I have my craft knife there as well because it's not perfect, I do end up overlapping sections, but then after the fact, I just kind of cut off the excess tape. I'm overlapping the tape just slightly one strip to the next, and right there you see I'm doing side strips as well, just to reinforce that. So I'm on to the next section now, and some sections I do tape better than others. I am trying to use a, a higher quality duct tape, just to make sure that it stays nice and strong. And it's just a process going section by section and making sure you're not overlapping the pieces from the other section. If you do, however, like I said, just use your craft knight to cut them out. Just be careful doing that. So let's watch as I finish. Oh, I was pretty proud of this. I rotated the boards so that I could get these sections closer to me and wouldn't stretch. Now you're probably wondering how I managed to flip the jigsaw puzzle various ways to do this. I didn't capture it on camera, but basically with my hubby's help, we just grabbed two more boards. We sandwiched the whole jigsaw puzzle between boards. We taped the boards together so it wouldn't come apart. We braced it against the table and we just flipped the whole thing. Now I realize you probably could have just divided the puzzle into sections, flipped smaller sections much easier, maybe even bracing between foam boards and then reconnect all the sections. But that's just what we did. We flipped the whole thing in one go and it worked. I was so worried that it would all fall to pieces, but it didn't, so we got lucky there. Now, the sections are all taped and this is where I have to be careful. Now I'm trying to disconnect the sections from one another, but the pieces on the edges aren't very well taped. So some of them were coming loose and I just simply put them back into place and just slowly, I know this is sped up, manage to remove the sections one from the other. Now, 
I'm using a level and I think at the end it kind of looks like it's a little slanted but according to the level it's straight. I think my camera was just a bit slanted so I marked off where I wanted the upper top section to go. I'm wiping down the wall to make sure it's clean because I'm using those command strips. And I'm actually using a bigger size strip. At the top of the section, they're like large size command strips. And at the bottom of the sections, those are smaller strips. I think I actually used a medium size. And I'll show an image later on in the footage, but at the bottom, I'm letting the strips overhang the section because to remove them, you pull down on them. So I wanted the little tongue tag to stick out so that it'd be easier to remove the strips. Now I make a mistake here. I'm placing those command strips at the same spot that I placed all the other ones. And if you look, they're actually sitting on top of those little tags from the bottom row ones from the top section. So I had to kind of cut them off because it made quite a big bump. What I did in this case is then I put the command strips directly on the wall so they wouldn't overlap with the strips from the top section. And that way that was much easier. So I just have the strips on the bottom and the rest I put directly on the wall. And look, it worked. I managed to get it all up on the wall nicely in four sections overlapping without any gaps. And I think it just looks absolutely amazing and it worked. Now, I will admit, I could have done better with this lower section here. As I explained during the time lapse, I placed the command strips, hanging strips, in such a position that they overlapped with the ones that were hanging down from the top section. I did much better at this lower section because I put the strips directly on the wall. I was thinking that I could probably take this section off the wall and redo it. There is the slightest bump right here in the middle and of course where the four corners meet up there's four command strips there so it is a bit bumpy but really I'm sure you can't even see it on camera you I know where it is so I can tell but just standing looking at it it's not that obvious you will notice that there you go you can see the little tabs sticking out at the bottom that's just for easy removal I was thinking should I glue it or just leave it as is. I mean, that saves so much money by not gluing it. As well, should I have it professionally framed? Or I could just buy some wooden molding and stain it whatever color I want and actually affix the molding directly to the wall. Just have it cut and put and it would look like it had a frame. So I can't decide because obviously gluing professionally framing would cost a lot more money the taping solution, that wasn't expensive at all, very affordable. I do like the effect though of the glue. I can't decide which I like better. Um, and I think the molding could potentially look nice. It would be an affordable solution to go buy some. And even if I just held it up and went, no, nah, I don't like it, you know, I could just remove it. So I don't know what to do. I think though, it looks absolutely amazing. Every day it makes me smile to see it up on the wall. I'm so pleased that it works so well. And so I'm thinking that if ever I come to display the Educa 42,000 around the world up on a wall or some sort of stand, I would do that. I would tape each section into six smaller sections because that's the repeat cut pattern. But I would then also connect the section next to it and tape you know, do a rolling taping thing where I make sure all the sections are connected as they're taped. That way I would hope in the end that they would all interconnect nicely. I can visualize that in my head, not sure if it's, you know, if I'm vocalizing it properly, but basically don't tape a section without having the section next to it connected to make sure it all fits nicely. So I would have to potentially finish more sections before I tape the entire thing. But what do you think? Leave your comments below. Let me know, should I glue it? If I glued it, I could still glue it and mount it on the wall. Should I glue it and have it professionally framed? Should I leave it as is and just maybe do the molding or not even do the molding? What do you think about the gluing? I put up some photos of the Ravensburger with the glue and this one without the glue. 
I don't know. I can't. I think it fills in the gaps and the holes a bit. But I also love the effect that you can tell it's a jigsaw puzzle. So I'm so very pleased. I'm. I mean, this is a great solution of how to quickly and easily tape a large jigsaw puzzle with multiple sections because now it's transportable. And look, there's no misalignment, no offset, and it looks absolutely great on the wall. So I'm happy overall. I'm just wondering if I should leave it like this or do a bit more with it. So I'd love to read your comments, leave them below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao.